bring in Dr. Lindsay Hayes from NASA because a rock has been found on Mars that could be evidence of ancient life. Uh, Dr. Hayes, are you there? I am. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we hear you just fine. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's talk about this. What does that mean? Yeah. So um, last year, we are, so our Perseverance rover is operating on Mars right now. Um, and last July, there was a big announcement that we found this really interesting rock that was on Mars. And when we saw it, we immediately knew that there was something really interesting about it. And there were spots on this rock. And we were thinking that potentially this was made by, by ancient life operating on Mars. Um, and, and this is perhaps the closest we've ever seen to discovering life on Mars. And yesterday was the publication of the peer-reviewed paper about this potential biosignature. Um, and so that's a really exciting thing, right? That's the next step in the science process. Um, you know, we, we find something interesting. We'll tell people that we find something interesting. But then we looked at the area around us and we, and we looked at the potential other formations for something like this. And we're very excited. And so the publication is out there for the science community to, to take a look at now. You know, this is one of those uh, conversations where I think if you're into science, you're automatically, your antennas go up. You have so many questions. Uh, I do. So let me start with this biosignature. Break that Absolutely. down for the average person that's never taken a biology class that has no idea what that means. Certainly. So a biosignature, right, if you break it down into the two pieces, bio meaning life, signature is a sign. And so when we talk about this as a potential biosignature, that means it's a characteristic or an element or a molecule, some kind of a feature um, that may have a biological origin. Um, but we want to, because it's a potential biosignature, um, we want to look at it a bit more. We need more data or we need further study to be able to say conclusively, like this absolutely was created by life. Um, a biosignature, of course, also cannot be created by a process that is not life. And so this is where we're in the process, right? We found something, it could be a biosignature, and we're trying to figure out where we go next from there. So are we saying that, okay, so let me break this down because <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. Okay, so, so are so we exciting. saying, let's talk more. <laughs> are we saying that, you know, evidence of, okay, follow me here, doctor, I'm not yeah. as smart as you. Are we saying that dust was found, lint from clothing? What, what exactly was found that proves that life exists on Mars or existed? Right. So a good point. This is not we're not talking about life that's on Mars today. Right. We're talking about past life on Mars. And what this feature that we found, um, it's not a fossil. Don't think, you know, a dinosaur bone or something like that. We're talking about a, what we call think, think of it more like a trace fossil. It's more like a footstep or um, or something like somebody's lunch. Right. This is a leftover lunch and, and maybe some um, some scat or something that was released uh, after eating that lunch. That's the kind of thing we're seeing. We're seeing evidence that microbes, so tiny little things, were on the surface of Mars, potentially. Um, we're consuming the, the chemicals in the environment around them um, and releasing byproducts, let's say. Got it. So we don't know if this was, because you know, the first thing that the average person thinks of, aliens. We're not saying that. <laughs> we're saying this could be something as simple as a form of an insect or something to that degree something even simpler than that, right? Something that is like, you know, something like pond scum, something that lives in the oceans or something like that. We're talking about microbial life. So something really, really simple. Um, we're talking about a rock that is three and a half billion years old. So really, really old. And for comparison on our planet at three and a half billion years ago is where we see some of the earliest traces that we feel confident are life on our planet. So even if we'd find something like this on our planet, we would be really excited about finding it. Um, but finding it on Mars at the same time that life was, you know, sort of getting going here on our planet, far before there was any sort of multicellular life, even insects, even things like that, is a really exciting finding. How big is this rock? How big are we talking here? Yeah, so the rock itself is about, you know, a foot and a half by three feet. So, you know, a, a decent sized rock. Um, but the features that we're talking about are really small. So they're like less than a centimeter, like half an inch or smaller. Um, small features, this is why we're calling them poppy seeds and leopard spots, because they're not large features. They're pretty small. Okay, I was looking up to see by what you said, a foot and a half by three feet, what could that be compared to? So our viewers can kind of get that in their mind. So yeah, that's the equivalent to like a small coffee table is what sure. <laughs> I would, you know, uh, I'm a baseball fan. Let's say it's close to home plate, right? Something of that scale. Okay. Small. 
Got it. Okay. What happens next in uh, really, you know, getting down to the nitty gritty to determine yeah. exactly what this life is? Absolutely. So, so one of the big steps that's happened between last year and this year, right, is that the science team for this mission were able to see a little bit more about the rocks nearby. So they have context. So they know what formed, uh, what else, what other rocks formed around the same time that these features were forming. The other thing that happened is that they did a, a search of what other scientists have already published, so what we know may also cause it. Um, and so they were able to rule out some potential options about processes that don't involve life that may have caused this feature. The next step and where we are now is that if this is open for the broader science community around the world and within the US to be able to find other potential ways, hey, I think we can make that feature by doing this other thing or this other chemical process or something like that. Um, and, th and so that's where we are, right? We're at this process where the broader science community can look at it and either agree or refute, um, support or refute what we see here. Um, or what was published in this paper. And then hopefully, eventually, these samples may be returned to Earth and we'd be able to really pull them into some of our best labs here on planet Earth and, and look at them with all kinds of instruments, some of which may not have even been invented yet, and really interrogate this rock, really understand uh, what was going on when this rock was being formed. Uh, our producer was uh, admiring your Mars poster uh, that is behind you and was asking, what is it? What else is on that poster behind you? This one here? Let me see. The other one. The one that the is other. right behind you, he said. Oh, this one here. One of this one here. Yeah. So we have, um, you know, we like to remind folks um, that, you know, our exploration of Mars is not just a new thing. Um, this is one of our sort of classic poster, classic travel poster series. Um, and this one here has actually two people <laughs> standing on Mars and sort of viewing the ca the, the um the valleys and everything like that and a, and a rocket, I guess, leaving them there on Mars. <laughs> I know, you but, weren't you know, expecting Mars that question. Mars exploration is something that NASA's been working on for 60 years. Yeah. You know, so there've been a lot of people thinking about um, what, what we can do robotically at Mars, what we can do with people at Mars in the future. Um, and so it's, it's really a thing, you know, this, this discovery, for example, is just one in a series of fantastic things we have done um, around Mars and on Mars as we've been exploring the red planet. Well, let me know if NASA wants to sign somebody up to yeah. go to Mars for a quick trip. All right, let me ask you another question. This one is a little off topic. There's been a, a lot of memes out there about this secret moon base, the dark side of uh, the moon. What do you make of it? <laughs> you know, um, I'll say this. We have been working really hard at NASA to, uh, to, to sort of establish a long-term presence on the moon. And, you know, right now we are thinking about um, with our Artemis missions, how we get to the moon, how we work on the moon and all of that. So, you know, as we're moving forward, uh, we like to uh, celebrate every step along the way. So in terms of a, a secret something, definitely not. But in terms of a, you know, follow along as we do more things, I, I really hope you all and, and your audience can do that. Yeah, I'm so interested in everything that you've had to say. I wish I was smart enough to work at NASA. Uh, Dr. Lindsay Hayes from NASA. Uh, I love that. It was easy to talk to you. Very easy conversation. Sometimes you talk to people from the science community and you just, you don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, it's been a really you know, great conversation to have. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. I was just going to say, you know, I am, this kind of stuff I find so exciting and I love being able to talk with anybody else who shares my excitement about it. So yeah. I'm very happy to be able to speak with you today. Very exciting. Very good conversation. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. Have a great rest of your day, Dr. Hayes. Thank you very much. Have a good one. All right.